Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Bethlehem Lutheran Church and a very special welcome to any guests who may be in worship today with us for the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. Today's liturgy is Divine Service 1, which is on page 151 in the front of our hymnals. We begin our service this morning by singing our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. 
Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We say together our introit. Let your steadfast love comfort me according to your promise to your servant. Your hands have made and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you shall see me and rejoice, because I have hoped in your word. I know, O Lord, that your just decrees are righteous, and that your faithfulness you have afflicted me. Let your mercy come to me, that I may live. For your law is my delight. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let your steadfast love comfort me according to your promise to your servant. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the strength of all who trust in you, and without your aid we can do no good thing. Grant us the help of your grace, that we may please you in both will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Amos chapter 6. Woe to those who are at ease in Zion, and to those who feel secure in the mountain of Samaria, the notable men of the first of the nations, to whom the house of Israel comes, pass over to Kalna and see, and from there go to Hamath the great, and go down to Gath of the Philistines. Are you better than these kingdoms? Or is there a territory greater than your territory? O oh, you who put far away the day of disaster and bring near the seat of violence. Woe to those who lie on the bed of ivory and stretch themselves out on their couches and eat lambs from the flock and calves from the midst of the stall, who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp and like David invent for themselves instruments of music who drink wine in bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oils, but are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore, they shall now be the first of those who go into exile, and the revelry of those who stretch themselves out shall pass away. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading this morning comes from 1 Timothy chapter 3. The saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to be to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach. The husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money, He must manage his own household well, with all dignity keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders, so that he may not fall into disgrace into a snare of the devil. Deacons likewise must be dignified, not double-tongued, not addicted to much wine, not greedy for dishonest gain. They must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience, and let them also be tested first. Then let them serve as deacons if they prove themselves blameless. Their wives likewise must be dignified, not slanderers, but sober-minded, faithful in all things. Let deacons each be the husband of one wife, managing their children and their households well. For those who serve well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and also great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Our Gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16. Jesus said, There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water 
and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed, in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able, and none may cross from here there to us. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated.
This morning for my message, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. In a few days' time, there will be the feast day of St. Michael and all the angels, and I thought I would do my sermon on that this morning. So for the text this morning, my message comes from the book of Daniel, chapters 10 and 12. And behold, a hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly loved, understand the words that I speak to you, and stand upright, for now I have been sent to you. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood up trembling. Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words have been heard. And I have come because of your words. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days. But Michael, one of the chief princes, came to me to help me. For I was left there with the kings of Persia. And came to make you understand what is to happen to your people in the latter days. For the vision is for the days yet to come. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never has been seen since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like all the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Have you ever had to work behind the scenes. If you ever have, then you kind of know how much work goes into making something happen. For those who aren't behind the scenes, there's sometimes an ignorance or even a lack of appreciation for the finished project. Things just get taken for granted. They just magically happen. For example, weddings. Weddings just happen, right? I know a lot of you have had experience with this. A lot of thinking, planning. They don't just happen. Anyone who hasn't helped plan a wedding usually has no idea the work or the time to make it happen. The same goes for teaching. A lot of parents don't understand all the behind the scenes work that goes into teaching a room full of kids. Weddings, teaching, work, parenting, you name it. If you're not aware of all the things that go on behind the scenes, you tend to not appreciate just how much work goes into making all these things a reality. This is why there's a celebration day in the church for St. Michael and all angels to give thanks to God for all the -the behind-the-scenes work. We don't truly understand all of the work that goes into protecting and caring for us. It's not to say that God needs any help. He's God. He's almighty, all-powerful. But our Lord sends his angelic army to constantly watch over us, to fight for us, to protect us, and to care for us. We get a glimpse of this in the reading from the book of Daniel where our pre-incarnate Lord, Christ himself, speaks to Daniel about his archangel Michael coming to help him battle and repel the evil angels. The princes who had come to Babylon, to Persia, in an attempt to thwart God's plan for his beloved Israel. At this point in history, Israel had been in captivity of Babylon for decades. Taken captive to Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar. This was all part of God's plan. The Israelites had rebelled against God 
and they had lost their way and refused to repent. So God sent Nebuchadnezzar in order to discipline his rebellious children and call them to repentance. Fifty years later, King Cyrus is now in charge of Persia. And he will be the king who will decree that the Israelites are now free to return to Israel. Again, this is all part of God's good plan. Do you think that the devil and his evil minions are just going to sit back and let all of this happen? God himself says in Revelation, The devil has come down to you in great wrath because he knows that his time is short. Recognizing that God's plan for the Messiah is to get Israel out of Babylon and back to the promised land, the devil and his minions do all that they can to obstruct and overthrow. But notice how they go about their evil business. They can't win with Israel, so they try a different approach. They try to come in through the back door of the pagan government working on all the kings and the powerful people there in Babylon, if they can get the government to do their evil bidding, they'll prevent the Israelites from returning to Israel. This is why God fights. He fights not the king of Persia, but the fallen angels who are fighting behind the scenes. The archangel Michael comes to help those to fight the evil angels. He comes to fight the good fight in obedience to his Lord and on behalf of God's own beloved children. In the reading from Daniel, Christ himself declares that Michael is the great prince, the archangel who has charge over God's faithful. That includes us here too. The archangel Michael came to fight for Daniel. However, the demons came to work on the kings. This is a big problem concerning entire nations and governments. Ask yourself the question, can whole groups of people be tempted to evil? Can entire nations Governments work evil against God and his people. And before anyone confuses evil with things like, I just don't like a certain politician because I don't like his hair or I don't like his tax policy. Think back to all the evil that has become normalized and accepted over the past many decades. How long have fathers been absent from home and families broken? How long has divorce been completely acceptable? How about sex outside of marriage? How about slander or covetousness? It seems like every politician runs on these platforms in one way or another. Demons have been at work on the nations and people of the world for a long time. And nobody really pushes back against them anymore. Many people even vote for it. It's normal now. The legality of abortion has become a matter of each individual state. But many of them still allow it and even champion it. And fantasize is masked behind a reasoning of my body, my choice. To say that there are only two genders, male and female, is becoming lawless. It's considered a hate crime in parts of the country, and it's spreading. What God calls good, man calls evil. And what man calls good, God calls evil. Do you still think that the evil angels work on groups and nations and governments aren't doing it? that they're not having any effect. We're seemingly at a point where all we can do is cry out, Lord, have mercy, save us from this evil, the evil from the devil and our own selves. But that's just it. 
He has saved us. He does save and deliver us. He doesn't take all of this lying down. That's why he has sent us his angels. Don't think that because of all the evil happening is meaning that God is somehow losing the fight or not even in control. He's working behind the scenes. And we don't even realize it most of the time. We don't realize the great spiritual battles that are taking place and constantly fighting all around us between the evil angels and our guardian angels. As bad and as evil as we think things are nowadays, we don't realize just how wicked things could be if all of the holy restraint and protection that we have in place was removed. After all, no Christian right now is being fed to lions yet, are they? We don't see behind the curtain. And even if all this, the paraments that we have out, our pews, the altar, or even this entire church, if all of this was taken away from us, we still have our faith in Christ. No matter how bad or how evil things get, for us fights the valiant one whom God himself elected. This same Lord, Jesus Christ, our mighty fortress and our Savior, appoints and sends His holy angels to protect us and minister to us. The devil and his minions do not have the power or the authority to take your faith away from you. If they could, they would. But no matter how hard they try, they can't. We don't see all that goes on behind the scenes in this sinful and fallen world. The devil is constantly on the prowl, seeking to devour us, seeking to overthrow God's good and gracious will. The will that desires all people to turn and repent and hold fast to him and his love. We don't see all the angelic behind the scenes work, but that's precisely why we should Take a little time today to meditate and give thanks to God for his precious gift of his heavenly angelic care. No matter how bad things seem to get, God has already won. We have his word and promise that even in the last days, when it's never been as bad or as evil as all the time in all of history, our archangel Michael, will arise and deliver us home to heaven. Until then, we live in the assurance of faith. We live by trusting, not in what we see, but in what we hear. We trust in God's word that declares victoriously, it is finished. We trust and hold fast to that promise that he is always with us, even to the very end of the age. We trust in his promise that he has put his name on us and made us his own, writing his name on our heads, our hearts, and writing our names in the book of life. We trust in his promise that every time when two or more are gathered, he is here with angels, archangels, and all the company of heaven gathered around him in joy. Christ dwells and abides with us, and his angels will always surround us and shield us with his love and with his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God surpass us all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds and the true faith of Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. We now make profession of our Christian faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please rise. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified.
in our prayers this morning, after each petition that ends with, Lord, in your mercy, we respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God of mercy, you provide us with your holy word that we might know and believe in Christ. Make us diligent to study your word and dwell in your promises that we are content with your provision in this life and joyfully look toward the life to come. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, remember the men whom you have given the noble task of pastor. Strengthen them that they may be above reproach as they care for their own households as well as your church. Preserve them from every snare of the devil and give them a great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Father in heaven, preserve our homes from idols and sins of idleness. Bless fathers and mothers as they catechize their children, that generations to come might faithfully guard their hearts and rejoice in your gifts. Lord, in your mercy. King of kings and Lord of lords, watch over the authorities of this and every nation. Deliver them from idols of wealth and power and grant that they would use their offices and service to you and to those you have entrusted to their care. We also ask that you would bless and protect our police officers, firefighters, disaster relief workers, medical personnel, and members of our armed forces, especially Valerie Hosteller and Hank Peening. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, Give comfort, peace, strength, and healing to all who suffer in heart, mind, body, or soul. Hear us as we especially pray for Carter and Xander Herzl, Joseph May, Lois Upton, Ken Burkhart, Angela's relatives Ron Stone, and Wayne and Joanne Fike, and also Ron and Caroline's grandson, Eli Dreffs. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, You deliver your people from the suffering of this world and comfort them with eternal rest. Receive our thanks for your kindness to the saints who have gone before us and preserve us in repentance until we are carried by angels to Abraham's side. Lord, in your mercy. Answer all doubt and fear, O Lord, with confidence in your word and sacraments that by these means of grace, we may be kept in holiness and guarded from temptation and despair until the day when you bring all things to their perfect fulfillment and we are delivered to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we now collect our offerings.
prays, Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. may be seated. and worship today with us. A few announcements this morning and uh, a correction. Uh, our quarterly voters meeting is coming up on uh, Sunday, October 9th, not the 10th. Got that little typo there. So show up on Sunday, not Monday, please. Uh, also, if uh, you have any pictures, articles, or news that you would like in the next edition of the congregation's newsletter, uh, please send them to Ken Brower at his email listed there. Also, the Sun Catchers will be holding the annual winter clothing drive for students at Concordia University in Seward. If you have any unwanted winter clothing like uh, coats or gloves, uh, please consider donating them. Uh, everything will go to use. Anything that does not get used there at Concordia will go to People's City Mission. Is that right? Well, I think. Sure, yeah, the, they'll find a place for them. So. So uh, everything given will find a place. Are there any announcements this morning that I may have missed? If not, have a wonderful week in the Lord. <laughs>